Okay, we're back. All right. So to you, it doesn't seem like that long, but I actually went and got a cup of coffee and quite enjoyed it. Okay, so um, rather than typing things out, I'm going to go ahead and just use the whiteboard for this. Okay. And um, I'm going to be going over all of the different um, truth functions for the various operations that we'll be using. Okay. All right. And um, to illustrate this, I'm going to be introducing a couple of other symbols that you'll be familiar with. Okay. All right. So we're going to use the box and the triangle here. Okay. So what does box stand for? Okay. Box is going to stand for. Whoops. Let me. All right. I'll just type it. I didn't want to do drawing and typing, but fine. Okay, so box is going to stand for any any well-formed formula whatsoever. Okay, so um, box, for example, could be um, just a capital letter P. Um, it could be P or Q, right? Um, bound by parentheses, it could be something really complex, like it's not the case that P or, you know, Q or S, um, and I don't have all the symbols, you know, let's let that be a bullet and T, it could, it could be anything really, 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 really complex like that. Okay. All right. Those are all well-formed formulas, except for, I think I was missing a parenthesis there. Okay, and then likewise, um, triangle is going to stand for um, triangle is going to stand for any well-formed formula as well. It can be a single sentence letter, it can be a negated sentence letter, an entire chain of, you know, either negated or non-negated sentence letters linked with logical operators and combined with parentheses. Okay, yada, 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 right? So for any well-formed formula box and for any well-formed formula triangle. Okay, so we'll start with the easy one. We will start with, um, whoops, I need to get back on draw here. There we go. So we'll start with negation. So the tilde. Okay, now, and um, some textbooks use T's and F's for um, true and false, but we're going to be using one and zero since that's what Gensler's textbook use, uses. Okay. Now, um, every once in a while, I'll write in a T or an F instead of a one or a zero. So I do apologize for that. Okay. So if box is any well formed formula whatsoever, um, and he, I should probably mention this, um, we're, we're doing what's called bivalent. Logic. Okay. Now, what that means is that um, it's a two value system. Okay. So not all not all truth functional logic is is bivalent. There are there are trivalent systems. There are you know polyvalent systems where there's there's more than two truth values. Um, so we're representing every capital letter uh, capital letter. Yeah, capital letter as either being determinately true, one, or determinately false, zero, okay? So we're not doing any, any um, truth functional logic that has multiple truth values other than the two value system, you know, true and false, which is what one and zero uh, correspond to, okay? Now, but clearly if, if this well-formed formula, whatever it is, box is true, then, tilde box, not box, is going to be false, okay? And then likewise, if box is false, then tilde box is going to be true, right? So for any well-formed formula box, um, if box is true, whatever that formula is, is true, then tilde box is going to be false. And if box is false, then tilde box is going to be true, okay? All right, now, and then we'll do conjunction. So we've got box, we've got triangle, okay. And then we have box and, 
triangle. Okay, let's get more line in there. There we go. Okay. All right. So if some well-formed formula box is true and some well-formed formula triangle is true, then box and triangle, so they're they're true independently of each other. Well, if they're true independently of each other, then when we combine both of them, when we can join both of them with a conjunctive operator, clearly that is going to be true. Okay, so for any well-formed formula box and any well-formed formula triangle, if box and triangle are both true, then box and triangle is going to be true. Okay, all right. Um, if box, some well-formed formula box is true and triangle is false, then box and triangle is going to be false, okay? Now, this is the same thing, just switched. Well, if one of them is false and one is true, then once again, the whole formula is going to be false, okay? And then if they're both false, right? Box and triangle is also going to be false, okay? So this is a shortcut. Shortcut for conjunction, is that there's only one condition, there's only one condition where conjunctive statements are true and that's when both parts of it are true, okay? So there's only one condition where a conjunctive statement is going to be true and that's when both parts are true, okay? So um, yeah, we'll do a complex formula in a minute, all right? So next we will do disjunction. So we've got box, got triangle, and then we're going to do either box or triangle. Okay, box, triangle, and either box or triangle, okay? Okay. Now, if box, some well-formed formula box and some warm well-formed formula triangle are both true, then either box or triangle is true. Okay, now, so um, this is important. Unless stated otherwise, we always assume that the disjunct is inclusive. So a lot of times when we use disjunctive statements, when we say an either or, we use it exclusively, meaning it can't be both, okay? Now, but logically speaking, that's not what this means here. So this does not mean automatically that it's exclusive, okay? So in order for this to be an exclusive disjunct, you would have to have something like this, okay? So I'll just use P and Q, so that'll be easier, right? Um, so if I had either P, or Q, all right? So either P or Q, and it's not the case that P and Q. Okay, what, what is this telling me here? So it's not the case that they're both true. Well, that means that this is exclusive, okay? So if you have a state, so this would be like either P is true or Q is true, but they're not both true and they're not both true. Okay, well, that tells me that this is an exclusive disjunct. Okay, now, but unless you're given some indication here that the disjunct is exclusive, you always assume that it is inclusive. Okay, now another example of an obviously exclusive disjunct, you know, would be something like this. Um, either S or not S. Well, yeah, I mean, logically, at least in, you know, systems of logic that, you know, align with the principle of non-contradiction, then yeah, that's an exclusive disjunct. Either S is true or S is false. That's exactly what that means. Okay, so this is clearly exclusive. Now, but if, but if you're just given, you know, something like, you know, T or, M, right? 
that doesn't mean either T is true or M is true and it's gotta be one or the other, it can't be both. No, it, it can be both, okay? So um, um, I'm either I'm going to um, eat a tomato or I'm going to eat marinara sauce. Well, I can do both of those things, okay? All right. Okay. Now, well, if one part of this is true, so box is true, whoops, gotta go back and draw here. So if box is true and triangle is false, right? In order for this to be true, it just needs to be the case that at least one part of it is true. So if I say either box is true or triangle is true, what I mean is at least one of them is true, okay? So if box is true and triangle is false, it still meets this condition of at least one of them being true. So that would be true, okay? And then likewise, so the, the third row here is just the same thing, just switched around again. So that would be true, okay? And then if box is false, some well-formed formula box and some well-formed formula triangle, if they're both false, then box or a triangle is going to be false, okay? So just as um, uh, with conjunction, there's a shortcut. So with conjunction, there's only one condition where a conjunctive statement is true. With disjunction, there's only one condition where a disjunctive statement is false, and that's when both parts of it are false. Okay. Okay, now we get the fun one, the material implication, okay? Whoops, I guess we'll go in order here and use box first. Sorry, triangle, okay? So triangle, some well-formed formula triangle, some well-formed formula box. I'm screwing up here. I was just about to write P and Q. Let's do this again. So for some well-formed formula box and some well-formed formula triangle, and then we have if box, then triangle. Okay, all right. Okay, so remember what this means. If box is true, then so is triangle. So if box is true, then so is triangle, okay? Well, if box is true and triangle is true, doesn't that meet this condition of, well, if box is true, then so is triangle? Yes. Okay, so if triangle is true, and, or I'm sorry, if box is true and triangle is true, then that means if box, then triangle is true. Okay, well, what if triangle is true, but box is false? So remember what this means. If box is true, then so is triangle. Well, if this is true and this is false, wouldn't that make this false? So box is true, triangle is false. Well, what about if box is true, then so is triangle? No, that condition would fail, okay? So that means any situation where the antecedent is true and the consequent is false means that the conditional statement is going to be false. So with a conditional statement, anytime you have a true antecedent and a false consequent, Right? That means that the conditional itself is going to be false. Okay, well, what about this? If box, then triangle, where box is false and triangle is true. Okay, so notice what this means. All this means is if box is true, then so is triangle, right? If box is true, then so is triangle. Okay, does it say anything about, well, if box is false, does it give you any indication about what the truth value of triangle is going to be? No, it does not, okay? So even though it's true that if box is true, then so is triangle, it doesn't mean if box is false, then so is triangle, right? This only reports what happens when the antecedent is true. It doesn't report anything 
about what happens when the antecedent is false, okay? So believe it or not, when you have a false antecedent and a true consequent, anytime you've got a false antecedent or a true consequent, you've got a true material conditional, okay? So let me give you an example, right? If Cody is a dog, then Cody is an animal, right? If Cody is a dog, then Cody is an animal. Now, if it were false that Cody is a dog, does that mean it would be false that Cody is an animal? No. Well, if Cody is a dog, then Cody is an animal. Well, Cody's not a dog, therefore Cody's not an animal. No, that does not work, right? That's denying the antecedent. That's a logical fallacy, okay? All right, now another way of thinking about this um, is this. So I'll just put it over here. Um, so if I use P or Q, or P and Q, I guess. All right, if P then Q is actually logically equivalent to either not P or Q, okay? So every conditional, if P then Q is logically equivalent to either not P, or Q, right? But how many conditions are there where a disjunctive statement is false? There's only one condition where a disjunctive statement is false, okay? Now, so if this were, if P were false, right? What would that make this tilde, right? If P were false, that would make the tilde true. And if Q were true, Okay, so what are we comparing here? So P is false, which means tilde P is true, and Q is true. Okay, well, that means we've got either true or true. So that means that that wedge, the lowercase v, that would actually be true. Okay, but that's exactly what this says here. So I know it seems counterintuitive, but there's only one condition. There's only one condition where a material implication is false, and that's when you've got a true antecedent and a false consequent, okay? So if box is false and triangle is false, that means that if box then triangle is actually true, okay? Now, clearly this doesn't work if you think of the conditional statement as sort of a, a causal or an explanatory, or, you know, or a grounding type of relationship, but, but that's not what it is. That's not what we're expressing here. Now, whether other kinds of conditionals um, ought to be interpreted as material conditionals or whether there's a better better analysis of the material conditional than, you know, a truth functional conditional, right? That That's a long-standing debate in philosophy of language and logic about how to treat material conditionals and how to treat um, other types of conditionals, you know, subjunctive conditionals and indicative conditionals and things like that, you know, strict conditionals um, in light of the material conditional. Okay, so that's all really good and interesting, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing in an introduction to logic class. Okay, all right. All right, now, um, last but not least, we have the triple bar. Okay, so some well-formed formula box, some well-formed formula triangle, and we've got box if and only if triangle, or box triple bar triangle. Okay, all right. Well, so keep in mind what this is. So um, box triple bar triangle, if I write it out, long-wise would be if box then triangle and if triangle then box. Okay, so if box then triangle and if triangle then box. Okay, all right, well what if all of these were true? Like we have up here. Okay, so we've got a true box and a true triangle, okay? So, well, so we've got if true, then true, okay, that's true. If true, then true, that's true, all right? And to find the value of the dot, we're gonna be looking at the value of this horseshoe. 
and compare it to the value of this horseshoe. Okay, so that all checks out. So if triangle and box are both true, then box if and only if triangle is going to be true. All right, let's get rid of all of these here. D -D -D. Okay. Now, um, if we've got that box is true, oops, gotta go back on draw here. All right. So we've got that box is true and triangle is false. Okay. All right. So here, where'd my mouse go? There we go. All right. So here with this conditional, we've got a false antecedent and a true consequent. Okay. So that makes that true. All right. Now, but here we've got a true antecedent and a false consequent. So that makes that false. Okay. So here we've got false and true. Okay. But since at least one of these is false, that makes this whole thing false. All right. Which makes the triple bar false. Okay, and the next one is just switched here. Back on draw, All right? So here we've got that box is false, and triangle is true, okay? Well, if this antecedent is false and the triangle is true, well, that means that the conditional is true. And here, this one would be false, okay? So now we've got true and false, so once again, the dot is false. So in a condition where either the first part of the triple bar is true and the second part is false, or the first part is false and the second part is true, if they're not both true or they're not both false, and anytime that happens with a triple bar, the triple bar is going to be false, okay? Now, but then if they're both false, If they're both false, the triple bar is going to be true. Okay. Okay. Now, so aside from um, aside from the triple bar being logically equivalent to the conjunction of two conditional statements, the triple bar is also logically equivalent to the either. Hard to draw. either box and triangle or not box and not triangle. Okay, so either they are both true or they are both false. Okay, either triangle and box are both true or triangle and box are both false, right? And if you look at what we have in this column here, that's exactly what's represented on line one and exactly re what's represented on line four here, okay? All right, now let's just go over a couple of examples just for kicks and giggles, all right? So let's do not the case that P or Right? It's not the case that either P or if Q then R. And let's say that P is true, Q is true, and R is false. Okay, so P is true, Q is um, true, and R is false. Okay, now um, what's known as the main operator here is this negation. All right, so this tilde is actually negating everything inside of parentheses. Okay, so this would be, you'd basically be saying it is not the case that either P or if Q then R, if you, you know, said it in English. So it is false that either P is true or if Q then R is true. Okay, now, so if P is true and Q is true and R is false, all right, so here we have if true, then false. So if Q, then R. 
All right, that would make this horseshoe false. Okay, now we're having here um, either P or Q, or I'm sorry, either P or if Q then R, so either true or false. So since P is true, that makes that wedge true, that lowercase v true, all right? Now, so this tilde, whoops, what did I do? There we go. All right, so this tilde is actually negating this wedge, this lowercase v, okay? So if the lowercase v is true, that would mean that the tilde is false, all right? So let me go ahead and go back here because I think I put this on the lecture sheet, I did. Okay, so when you're, when you're determining the order of um, truth values here, this is what you do first. So first you start with capital letters representing atomic propositions, like we just did, all right? We said P is true, Q is true, um, R is false. Okay, and then you calculate tildes immediately preceding sentence letters. All right, thirdly, logical operators grouping sentence letters that are bound by parentheses, All right? And then you do tildes immediately preceding parentheses. And then the last thing you calculate is the main operator. So this is whatever operator that joins the entire complex proposition, okay? And the example I just went over, it was the tilde outside of all of the different parentheses here. All right. Okay. And let me say a couple things about um, parentheses. So, why do we need parentheses? Well, without them, it's a little bit ambiguous um, what the main operator actually is. So, if I do something like this, okay. Um, P, horseshoe, Q, or R, right? Let me fix the wedge here. There we go. Okay, um, what could this mean? Okay, that it could mean this. Right? Either if P, then Q, or R. It could mean that. Now, but it could also mean this. It could also mean... if P then either Q or R, okay? Now, but those are not the same proposition. Those are, those are not the same proposition at all, okay? So in this first example, it's a horrible arrow, but whatever. All right, in this first example, this wedge, this lowercase v is the main operator. In the second example, it's the horseshoe. That's the main operator. So if I don't have this grouped by parentheses, I can't translate it as anything. Why? Because it's ambiguous as to what exactly it means. I don't know what this means here. Okay, now, but anytime you have all of your symbols as dots or wedges, um, it doesn't matter where you put the parentheses, okay? So, okay, you can just put the parentheses in, okay? So um, this is known as the property of, property of associativity here, okay? So you can do P and Q and R, or you can do P and, Q and R, though logically those are equivalent. It doesn't matter where you put the parentheses. You can do P or Q or R, or you can do P or Q or R, right? Those are logically equivalent. Those mean the exact same thing. So um, let me clean this up a little bit. Okay. No, I need to draw, thank you. So P and Q, and R is logically equivalent to P and Q and R, all right? Those mean the exact same thing, but notice in this example, I've got the, the 
secondary parentheses under over the first grouping and over here I've moved them but you can switch the parentheses it doesn't matter now same with just p or q or r is logically equivalent to p or q or r okay so if you're if you're miss, missing parentheses with you know where all your operators are um, dots or all your operators are wedges it doesn't matter where you put the parentheses now but you can't do this with horseshoes and you can't do this with triple bars okay so associativity does not work with horseshoes it also does not work with triple bars okay all right so this is getting a little um, lengthy here so um, i will go over truth functional statements falling into these categories in the next video when we start doing truth tables okay all right so i know this is a little bit more petty material and everything that we're getting into but if you have any questions on any of this please do not hesitate to email me and i will see you all soon